In this file, we have data for five mortgages financed with the Townsend Mortgage Company. And let's go ahead and complete uh, the empty columns with correct formulas. In column D, we are supposed to find the amount financed. So if the house cost is 400000 and if you put down 80000 then you do not have to finance the whole amount. You can take off 80000 So let's do the subtraction. We start any formula with the equal sign. And then we do not type the numbers, but instead we click the cell references because the numbers might change. So we want to have it updated, minus, and we click on the down payment. We can push enter or control enter to stay in the same cell. And we can bring down the formula by double clicking in the bottom right corner. And we can check the formulas to see if they are correct. Let's move on to column F where we have the rate per period. The mortgage rate is in this column and it represents an annual rate. However, we have 12 payments per year, so basically we have monthly payments. So we need to divide the 3.65 in this case by 12. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So equal sign to start the formula. We click on the number and we divide by 12. However, it's not a good idea to type the number. Maybe you're going to have uh, quarterly payments, although that will not happen. But for the sake of the example, we want to click the number here, which represents the payments per year, just in case that number might change. And our formula will have a problem, but let's go ahead and see what happens. So control enter to stay in the same cell. Double click to bring it down. And then you have the surprise over here. It says division by zero. So let's double click and let's see what happens. Let me just zoom in a bit. I'm using control and the wheel of the mouse. As you can see here, we have the blue over the red. But we are moving down. So the blue moves down and the red moves down. And then the blue moves down, the red moves down. So this is just the cell relative positioning. And it's normal. This is how Excel helps us. However, in this case, we do not want that. So there should be a way to actually lock the red cell. And that way is by adding dollar sign. So a dollar sign in front of, uh, of letter B of the column will lock the column. And then you can put a dollar sign in front of the row. It will lock the row. And because this is used a lot, there is also a shortcut. So if you have B5 over here, you can just push F4 on your keyboard and it will put a dollar sign for you. So let's see what happens in this case. If we double click, because we put that dollar sign, the cell now is locked. What I would like to do next is put a comment over here so you always add your notes in the file. And we can use Review tab, and you can use Notes if you want, or you can use Comment. Okay, so let's see what's the difference. If I put Note, it looks like that. So that's a Note. And if I put a Comment, it looks like this. And you basically can start the conversation. So if you share the file, then uh, if I start the conversation here, and then another person can just reply. So I post this one, another person can just reply to my conversation. So the comments are really useful for um, collaborating on a project. And I typed over here, absolute reference, a dollar sign to lock the cell. So if I'm doing something else and then I just hover my mouse, I can see my comments, my notes in this case. And you can always show all notes if you want. Or you can also convert to comments if you need it. Whereas that's a very useful feature, so I really recommend using all these notes. You can use them in all the files you work on. In column H, we need to calculate how many payments we have. If you have 12 payments per year, 
and you have 25 years, you'll need to times that. So let's go ahead and do it. Equals 25 times, and I click the 12. Now remember, if you move down, the B5 will become, is moving down. So instead of row 5 becomes row 6, row 7, and so on. So we do not need that. There is a way, instead of locking the whole cell, I can simply lock what is changing. And I know that what is changing is the row because it's moving down. So I can add a dollar sign in front of the row number. And that should do the same trick as before. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how it works. As you can see, it still takes B5, so it worked. The difference uh, between $2 sign and $1 sign between absolute and mixed reference is that if you have $2 signs, it means that if you move in any direction, it will still take B5. So say I have this, and I just move, just for the sake of the example, I'm moving in that direction, it still takes B5. Okay, so Control Z to undo, escape to exit, Control Z now. And let's see here, if I take this that has only one dollar sign, right? And if I just fill it to the right, you can see that the column is changing. So it's not B, it becomes J, it becomes I, and so on. Okay, so let me just undo. Let's go ahead and add a new note in here. So a new note, and I can just put what mixed references. So mixed reference so mixed reference is when you use only one dollar sign to log either the cell either the row or the column 